What is up guys, welcome back to another video. Today I've got something rather special for you. We've already covered Intel's first generation 6 core high end desktop part, the Big Daddy 990X, and judging by this video views, you guys seem to enjoy it. Months after the massacre caused by the second generation of mainstream processors, Intel also introduced high end counterpart, the Sandy Bridge E. With an MSRP of over $1,000, 3970X was the last to release in quarter 4 2012, nearly 12 months after the initial launch of the X79 lineup. This extreme offering was still manufactured on 32nm process. Compared to its predecessor, the 3960X, Intel improved on base clock, which was raised from 3.3 to 3.5 GHz, the turbo clock received a 100 MHz boost, now to 4 GHz, and I'm not entirely sure if you can call it an improvement, but for the first time in Intel's history, TDP was raised from 130 watts to 150 watts. Very nice. To tame this beast, I will be using Asus Rampage 4 Extreme motherboard. The desk setup utilizes four sticks of Core Safe Engines Pro memory running in quad channel and at 2400 MHz. CPU is kept cool by Corsair's H150i and powering this whole setup is Corsair's AX860i power supply. To generate CPU bottleneck, I will be using my trusty RTX 3080. Before we jump to synthetic benchmarks, let's quickly cover the overclock. The recently tested i7-2700K had no trouble achieving 5GHz and that's exactly what I'm aiming for with this 3970X. Luckily for me, overclocking with Rampage 4 Extreme was as easy as it gets. I usually start by disabling all of the unnecessary motherboard features such as Bluetooth controllers, disable power saving features and start tweaking. Multiplier of 50 will get us 5 GHz all-core overclock and we need to provide CPU with sufficient V-core voltage. This particular CPU was happy with 1.45 volts. Let's look at the total system power draw. At stock speed, idle was pulling just 118 watts, raising up to 277 watts under full CPU load. The 5 GHz overclock pushed idle power draw to 207 watts and to very juicy 426 watts under CPU load. And now it's time to benchmark this bad boy, starting off with Cinebench R23. At stock, 3970X scored 739 points, beating its overclocked older sibling 990X by around 12%. At 5 GHz, Single thread score increased by nearly 20% to 915 points, but despite this big gain, the mainstream i7-2700K kept a small 5% lead. Sorted by multi-threaded run, 3970X delivered nearly 6800 points, a good 35% increase over its first generation predecessor. Compared to a modern Ryzen 5 5600, 3970X is roughly 40% slower, which is impressive considering it's nearly a decade older. 7-tip dictionary benchmark likes higher core count and even at stock speed we see a 20% advantage over the overclocked quad-core 2700K. The 5GHz overclock squeezed extra 20% of GIPS. At stock speed, Blender Car Demo Render took 8 minutes and 22 seconds to finish, making it slower by a small margin over the 990X. 5 GHz overclock reduced render time by more than 2 minutes and made the 3970X roughly half as quick compared to Ryzen 5 5600. Looking at the 2700K and it's obvious, those two extra cores really help. Last test uses Handbrake to encode 10 gig 4K video down to fast 1080p 30 preset. Even at stock speed, 3970X leaves the older 990X behind by 4 minutes. Overclock reduced this task to just 18 minutes and 38 seconds, a big 24% reduction. Well, I'm not disappointed. 3970X showed some impressive results and more so when overclocked to 5 GHz. Let's see how it does in games. We start with F1 2018 and as always this is a Japan circuit and ultra high preset. CPU cores were only utilized to about 40% on average and GPU so around 55% usage. At stock, 
the 3970X managed 157 FPS on average, beating the first gen i7-990X by 20%. 5GHz overclock then improved average FPS by 14% to 184 and this was enough to beat the mainstream i7-2700K whilst AMD's FX9590 is really out of his league and around 40% slower. What a start, let's go! Dirt Rally used CPU cores even less than F1 2018 and indicated power draw Hubbard at around 130 watts. Stock 3970X pushed 124 FPS on average, which was nearly identical to an overclocked 990X, but for clearly better 1% lows. Overclock provided a huge, nearly 50% improvement to average FPS, beating the 2700K and pretty much matching the i9-10900X. If this is not impressive, I don't know what is. Deus Ex Mankind Divided finally put some strain on the CPU cores, pushing indicated power draw to around 160 watts and the 3080 is seen around 70% usage. At stock speed, 3970X delivered 127 FPS on average, leaving pretty much everything but the modern stuff behind. Pushing 5GHz increased the average FPS by 17%, overtaking 10900X and getting so close to the much newer Ryzen 5 5600. I could not believe my eyes when I saw the results. Just how bloody good was this CPU? Forza Horizon 4 continues good CPU utilization with around 150 watts of power draw and a similar usage of the RTX 3080. Running at stock speed returned 124 FPS on average this makes it about 20% faster over the older 990X. 5GHz overclock provided a nice 15% boost to average FPS, surpassing the mainstream i7-2700K by a smallest of margins. I really need to test more first-gen AMD CPUs soon, there's simply nothing to compare these Intel processors to. Shadow of the Tomb Raider loved CPU cores and once again pushed power draw to around 160 watts, but more importantly, check out 3080's utilization slowly attacking 90% mark and its power draw well in excess of 330 watts. Stock 3970X managed 124 FPS on average, nearly matching overclocked 2700K. At 5GHz we see 17% improvement to 150 FPS on average and 1% lows at 83. Not having a dig at AMD, but their FX8350, it's more than 40% slower in this test. Rainbow Six Siege with very high settings next. Stock 3970X delivered 230 FPS on average and beats the 990X by 11%. When overclocked, the average FPS sees 14% improvement and beats the 2700K by around 10%. 3970X pulled around 140 watts in Far Cry 6 and GPU utilization bounced around 50% mark. At stock speed, I saw 70 FPS on average with decent 1% lows at 51. Overclocking provided 20% increase across averages, once again pushing past 2700K by a small margin. Coming up to the last game tested, it's Cyberpunk 2077. I'm glad we're finishing with a bang. I saw both great CPU and GPU utilization, and as a bonus, the total system power draw during this benchmark often creeped over 600 watts, just how I like it. Using high preset, stock 3970X squeezed 92 FPS on average, matching the 2700K. At 5GHz we see a nice 21% improvement to 112 FPS on average, which is around 20% slower than Ryzen 5 5600. Alrighty, there you have it guys, what a beast. Who knew Sandy Bridge E was this good? When we looked at the i7-2700K a few weeks ago, I was well impressed with its performance, but this 3970X, it just takes it a step further. Those two extra cores helped with any productivity task you throw at it, and it's also faster in games. Despite being decade plus old, in my opinion, it still offers decent enough performance for your day-to-day -day needs. Not all is good however. Just like any flagship product, 
the 3970X was stupidly expensive to buy. Costing three times as much as the mainstream i7, it was not worth it despite the performance uplift. And that's only one of its problems. You see, these HEDT parts relied on high-end X79 chipset motherboards and those were not cheap either. Lastly, let's not forget about the increased power consumption. Overall though, I'm happy we looked at this bad boy. Did you ever own any of the Sandy Bridge eCPUs? Let me know in the comments down below and as ever, thanks for watching and I shall see you in the next one.